Hey, it's Dr. Cody Rall, Team Brainstorm. Today we've got a pitch and interview from Team Simon Fraser University at the Stanford Brainstorm Virtual and Augmented Reality Lab. Team Simon Fraser took home the first place for their work on using virtual reality to prevent relapse in addiction treatment. So I'm here with Team Simon Fraser University, and congrats on the win, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. So our first place winners for the Innovation Lab today. And you guys had such an interesting idea. I was hoping you could just describe it one more time for our audience here on the video. Well, thank you. So the problem we were trying to address was this issue of recovering addiction. Addiction is currently impacting 6% of the population. And a major challenge across all addiction recovery programs is predicting objectively whether someone is ready to actually be to go out of the addiction recovery program uh, unsupervised and live independently. And this is a major issue. So in order to address this, this problem, we came up with um, what we call a readiness index, um, which combines um, scientists from multidisciplinary um, environment to collaborate together to, to identify how we can address this issue. So our solution involves using virtual reality concurrently with biosignal monitoring and leveraging the power of machine learning algorithms. And our product is going to help um, caregivers within addiction recovery programs to, to, to understand objectively whether someone is ready to go out and also for patients to sort of have a confidence that they're ready to go. And we have partnered with an academy called John Wilkin Academy mm -hmm. to imp implement this model. And through our interaction within this fantastic um, conference, we learned from people with lived ex experience furthermore that we can also tailor our, our solutions for those who have already recovered and, and, and there is room for, mm -hmm. for validating our, our, our solution for them as well. Um, and also we learned a lot about the, the possibility of using different types of reality, virtual reality um, uh, okay. or augmented reality yeah. technologies. And also we learned how to improve our, our business model and how actually to expand our, our business to not only give uh, this, this solution to people with um, addiction, but also extend it to perhaps first responders and firefighters who are dealing with this problem across right. the city. It sounds like you guys learned such a wide range of things right. today. So were, were there different, we had a couple of different specialties in, in the audience. Did you feel like during the breakout session, you were able to find people in different industries to talk with? We had individuals with lived experience who came to us who had lived with addiction maybe for 20 years. So they, they, they gave us their two cents. We had people who had worked with insurance, health insurance companies, so they had their two cents. And we had also MDs who, who are the ones who would be potentially using this product. And I think this is a good opportunity to pass on the mic to my co-teammates who are are, who also had the opportunity to talk with these different individuals um, yeah. and they can also share their experience. Here. Um, we also had the opportunity to talk to IP specialists, so people have been doing that for 40 years Yeah, and that's really important and hard to do. Um, and for me the, the best thing was the wide range of insights we got from professionals, from therapists, and from patients. And I think the, the patient being here was really, really important. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I think I agree with uh, what you said. That was really great. Uh, you know, it, there was also entrepreneurs, like uh, people from like finance, people from like industry. So that, that was also a big deal, but also people from innovation, like what is, what else the next step? How can we conceive that? Did you think about that? It was kind of like bouncing idea and brainstorming. Uh, it was, you know, th that, that part was really, uh, you know, informative. Yeah. And also I think um, the event was characterized by a kind of openness that one doesn't regularly run into in conferences. Do you feel like because um, there was talk of like Shark Tank. Some, sometimes mm. we like describe our conference as like a <laughs> Shark Tank style competition. And but someone was... said it should be more like a dolphin Dolphins. pool. <laughs> <laughs> so is that kind of what you're re uh, referring to? And have you been to other conferences where people have been a little bit more insensitive to ideas that are in big... I mean, you guys are far along, but I can imagine 
other beginning stage ideas people would sure and, and that was um some of the i think positive attributes of the conference too was there was a lot of feedback from the audience right then and there yeah not waiting till after the conference right and then assembling all the written information and i think um the openness was in being able to hear what your potential problems were um, and learning from other people and usually it's more kind of a conflict uh, interaction which I think you know if you're ready for the market that's yeah. not a bad thing because it gives you practice sure but for the, the projects that were in the initial phases I think it's more important to hear mm. and then to adopt what you learn yeah, lots of positivity in the room today. But then also like good feedback, good critical feedback too, I, I feel like, yeah. Yeah, I really liked the mutual interaction. I think it was a two-way stream. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even the conference um, host were looking for feedback. And we, I personally had not experienced that to this extent before where they're actually hungry for <laughs> receiving feedback and improving because usually you don't want to be criticized because you put all these efforts to create something together and there was a um, pro from the host to keep giving them also feedback so I, I thought that was quite unique. Yeah, I think that we try to create yeah. a culture in which everybody's learning from each other rather than like telling each yeah. other how things should be done, you know? Because this yeah. is such a uh, new innovative space where you're trying to make changes in behavioral health with not only virtual reality technology, but other technologies as well. I think everybody's just trying to learn how to, you know, do things that are important and effective, you know? Right. And it's nice that you have so many technologists here too, who can actually speak to and know enough about the mental health domain to have effective kinds of conversations. Awesome. That was important. Well, it was so much fun having you guys here. Congrats okay. again on the win. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? Uh, no, just thank you. That yeah. was great. Was a great experience. We had a lot of fun. Well, first a warm um, thank you to the judges for inviting us here today. It's a pleasure to be here. I'd like to invite my teammates here. And this is a collaborative work, so we brought everybody. We have Diane Gramola, who is the Canada Research Chair in VR Technology and its Application in Health. We have, um, and she's a prof at Simon Fraser University. We have here prof um, Dr. Moreno, who is the leader of two national center of excellence uh, in Canada, and he's the head of the innovation for these two centers. And we have me, and I'm also faculty at Simon Fraser University, and I'm leading the uh, Canadian um, Technology Innovations for Addiction Recovery and Mental Health in Youth. All right, so it's a pleasure to be here and thank you for listening to us for the next five minutes. We decided not to have um, slides. That way it's more like Shark Tank way, so we can just go and pitch it to us what we're planning to do. So the problem we're trying to address here is related to addiction recovery and the process of recovery from addiction and substance use which currently impacts um, up to 6% of the population according to World Health Organization. So particularly one common problem across all addiction recovery programs across the world is not having some sort of an objective measure that indicates when an individual is actually ready to become independent and leave the supervised recovery program. So, and we know that the statistics are quite high around relapse following addiction recovery. So up to 60% of people actually relapse following um, addiction recovery programs. And during this time, during this abstinence time following a program, the, the risk of overdose is quite high. So doctors and caregivers within these programs do not have an objective measure to sort of understand how ready someone is to get into their past environment and interact within that context. So our solution is what we call a readiness index, which actually would inform patients and caregivers that whether someone is ready to go out in the world and be in the same context that they used to be in. And we have created, as you see, a team of multidisciplinary scientists to tackle this. And our solution is a mixed solution that involves using virtual reality to, to expose our patients while they're in the program 
cue, um, the environmental cues that make them use again, combine concurrently with measures from multi-system and bio-signal recording from multiple um, systems in the body. And all of that gets routed to a machine learning program. And the outcome is one index, which we call readiness index, and indicates if an individual probability-wise is ready to exit the program. So right now, so our solution is going to help um, doctors and caregivers at these programs to decide and make an informed decision about graduation of clients from the program. And we have particularly paired up. We have one customer right now, which is a long-term addiction recovery program with the name of John Wilkin Academy, with three uh, centers across North America, one in Canada, Surrey, where we're from, and two in the um, United States, one in Arizona and one in Texas, <coughs> where um, our solution is being implemented. And we're working not only with caregivers there, but also very closely with people with lived experience who are informing the generation of the virtual reality. Thank you, and uh, we finish uh, we finish a little bit on time so that Dr. Moreno can also tell you about our business model. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, um, so I'm, I'm going to try to be like really brief. Okay. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. But clients, medical staff, clinical facilities, uh, partner. We already have partners and interest in the field. Uh, they are so interested that they let us use their facilities and implement it directly there. Uh, business model. Uh, we don't have a subscription model or a patient per patient cost. Uh, there is two need because in every business that's one of the main important question what is the need so there is definitely a stress in the medical staff to when to make the decision and to receive support that's that's first a service need right? but what we discover is there is a legal issue with those decisions and that's one of the 13 main medical legal issues in the country in the United States and in most of the countries um, so that's a big need. This is like millions and millions of dollars every year. To give you an idea, there is 14,000 facilities on addiction in only in the United States. And this is a global problem. Uh, to give you an idea of the marketplace, it's 35 billions of dollars. Now I'm going to tell you about the competitor. After our uh, short research, we find none. There is no current solution offered. The closest we can find to really define our business model was company employee training safety. So generally, like 500, there are issues about that, that if they don't train well their employees and they get injured, they get sued. And so that's a very large, uh, multi-million uh, um, business. So what we tried, because there is not really a competitor in our field, we try to take this model and apply it how it works for the clinical facilities. And I'm um, good. Okay.